Hey guys, it's Will with Lost Visions Performance. Uh, today's project, we have this 2009 Subaru Legacy Outback. And we're going to be using a primitive off-road lift kit on it. Um, this one, they do offer a few different, well actually if you go on their website, they got quite a few different setups. Um, the one we went with is just their one inch kit, one inch front, one inch rear. Um, that keeps it really simple. Um, you don't have to worry about as much stuff with alignment issues and all that. Anytime you do anything like this, you definitely want to get it realigned. Also with this car, we are going to be replacing the uh, lower control arms, the sway bar links, and a bunch of other stuff on this one. Not really particular to doing the lift kit, just stuff that we're doing while we have this car in the shop. But the one inch kit seems to be the least invasive on these because of how little actual travel you have in the suspension system on these. It really starts to throw off anything for your alignment specs. So you have to start getting more and more custom setups for the rears on these when you start going over an inch in lift you have to have a lot of different uh, adapters and different brackets and everything to change the positioning of where the control arms and lateral links and everything go to be able to keep a correct alignment on it which they do sell as well um, so if you're wanting to go with a larger lift than that they definitely offer all kinds of different options if you go on their website and they're really cool and actually really uh, easy to talk to we've actually had to deal with them on some stuff on some uh, ordering issues we had on this one not on their side at all but uh, still so we have our one inch front spacers one inch rear spacers um, they do give you some very nice instructions real real simple i mean if you have any type of uh, can do itiveness with working on cars then you'll be just fine with it they give you the bare bone stuff but do give you some nice little actual color pictures and everything and that's the website getprimitive.com anyways real nice simple kit give you all the hardware the biggest thing is you have to remove the complete strut assemblies front and back and then i believe we'll actually have to totally break down the spring setup because the factory studs that come up through that mount to the car you have to actually press those studs out or hammer them out anyways they're basically a serrated press in stud we have to remove those that way we can use their new bolt setup and go up through the new lift spacers and then use their own nuts on top of those so that's really the hardest part if you're able to do struts on your car you can definitely do this lift kit so it's not uh not that difficult it just takes the time really so anyways we're gonna go ahead and get started on this one and uh we'll see how it goes all right so getting started on doing this primitive off-road lift on this outback first things we got the car up on the lift and everything and got the wheels and tires off of it anytime you're taking apart struts on any type of car it's always a really good idea to uh use like a marker or anything like that to set where the knuckle actually sits in conjunction with the strut because on these ones that can be adjusted for your amount of camber so certain ones, like on this, I believe this one isn't even factory adjustable, so you really don't have to worry about it that much. But some of these, especially if you are having alignment issues on yours after getting it, uh, after having it lifted or anything like that, you can go through quite a few different companies like uh, SPC and then uh, you know, Specialty Products Company, and they make different ones and some of these different alignment bolts. So a lot of them on vehicles that have a factory adjustable, you'll see like an off-center portion of the bolt head and the same on the other side and that is to be able to turn that and adjust it in or out while well, on these setups that aren't factory like that you can get the aftermarket ones and the bolt is actually has a cam off center in the center of it so you can't see that while it's together you don't know that until you try to take it apart and realize that this thing is a really odd shaped bolt but that could really throw it off because then you start messing with it you don't know what your alignment was to begin with so like i said either way doing the stuff you really need to have it aligned professionally afterwards but at least this way you can get it as close as you can to what it was before you started messing with it so like I said you can take do scribe marks on there use a marker use a paint pen um, on this one since everything's all black and it's all factory stuff I just shot it over with a little hit of uh, black spray paint that way just a real light mist on that that way when we take this apart you'll be able to see the shadow lines of where everything originally was will give us a perfect witness mark as to what we were working with before. So we will go ahead and we will remove these two lower strut to knuckle bolts and nuts, undo the stuff for our ABS wire, undo the bracket for our brake hose, undo our three nuts up top. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about when we were talking about taking apart the fronts is I did take off the axle nuts off both sides and then push the axles in. That way I make sure when we're undoing the strut and dropping this knuckle down, we don't hyper extend any of the CV axles and pull the tulips out we don't want to deal with any of that so definitely worth it to uh undo that nut and make sure that the axle has free travel inside the hub assembly that way you don't 
harm that portion because you don't have to deal with that as well. And then this will be able to drop down and away. We can pull our whole strut assembly out and begin on uh, doing our lift spacers up top. All right, so we have our first strut out here. Got this one sitting on the vise. If you are going to be doing this and removing the factory studs on your own, it might be best to separate this, actually compress the spring, take the strut mount off, and then be able to place some sort of socket underneath the head of the stud and hammer it through. And that's actually what the instructions actually say to do. Um, we are doing it without completely taking this apart, but we are using a tie rod end tool. So where it's able to actually pinch it and press it out just like a tie rod setup effectively. Um, but these are in there extremely tight. Even using this tool, you got to crank on them pretty hard and they come out with some pretty good force. So after the uh, first one popping out, I really thought these would uh, come out a little easier. After the first one popping out and shooting God who knows where, uh, we started putting the nut on top of it and then compressing like that and push it through. And it takes quite a bit of force. So these are, these are in there quite well. Using this sweet tool, and you can pick these up at uh, Harbor Freight or anywhere as well. Order them online, it's just a tie rod end separator. But that makes this job really nice. Like I said, other than that, if you have a spring compressor tool, take it apart. We were just kind of uh, hoping to not have to deal with all that on this one. But like I said, this tool does it amazing. But if you're not using that, definitely take your time because you don't want to distort this whole upper hat portion. And also, if you're just sitting there banging away on it with a sledgehammer, you could ruin the bearing in here, which will not be good for you. Once you get everything done, put it back together, you'll have all kinds of strut noises, which you don't want. So, all right, so we have our first strut assembled with our one inch lift, very simple setup. Once you get the uh, studs pressed out of the original one, that's the hardest part. After that, like I said, this one, we left the whole setup all together and then you're able to rotate it where you have a little more gap clearance right there. And it's a little bit difficult, but you're able to get the bolt in up through there and then start on each one rotate it and get it up through there and then you can go through and tighten all these down and this is a really nice setup because how it actually has a bolt that goes up through and cinches down in a nut inside the spacer itself helps keep the spacer from ever being able to walk around while under any type of driving or off-road conditions and also makes it very simple while you're putting this back in because now effectively you still have a stud set up to put up into the car it makes it a lot easier some of the cheaper kits i've seen for doing any type of level kits ones that are similar to this just have a straight hole straight through hole all the way and you have to use a nut and a bolt to put them together so when you're trying to get that bolt to go all the way through all this and then up through the car and keep everything lined up doing it it's just a real pain this one is nice it makes sure it can't walk anywhere and gives you the same factory mounting style setup so that is uh, a big plus all right so we got our front struts with the lift spacers essentially installed back into the car Still gotta do all this stuff in here but we got the strut assemblies actually mounted up into the car now we're working on the rear setup of it like i said we're doing some other stuff on the front suspension while we have it apart so if you pull out your uh base plate in here and everything you're able to get to the spots and there's two 14 millimeter nuts two on each side holding each strut assembly up in there so you get a ratcheting wrench to get in there and take those out this side we already have reassembled in there with the spacer this side is currently out and these ones even with all the totally stock spring and everything these are still really damn tight to get in and out of there so i recommend leaving your upper nuts on and then i had to use this pry bar here this is a good size pry bar kind of put it up inside here between some of the brake line stuff going up against the bottom of the strut assembly to be able to pry this down a little bit and take off the tension from where it goes through on this main bolt hole here. So it has this real long bolt that goes through the strut and into there. It has a nut on this side. And it's really damn tight in there. So using the pry bar to be able to pry on that afterwards to be able to release the tension to pull that bolt out. And then when you're putting it back together, it is really difficult because now you have an extra one inch pushing down on that whole setup. And if you're doing the inch and a quarter, inch and a half or two inch, then you gotta have mercy on your soul because Subaru will not. So we had to use this jack to be able to push up the strut assembly to compress the spring essentially while having someone pry down on the rear trailing arm to be able to get the bolt in there 
Um, you could use some different uh, spring compressors to be able to collapse that a little bit and give yourself some more room. Which would probably make it simpler if you're doing it yourself. But just be careful because it does go in there extremely tight. It takes a lot of work to do. So the front is basically a piece of cake. The rear is where the difficulty lies. Essentially we're doing the same thing as what we did for the front one. But on this one we do have to take this actually apart. So we're going to put this in the spring compressor there. To be able to remove this mount. Because the way this rubber sits it goes right against there on the stud and i don't want to have to try to cut any of that out and getting our new bolt in for the extra length this wouldn't really work right there best deal is to compress this take the mount apart and then pry this rubber off from the actual mounting plate um, it seems like it's all one piece it's not it does come off this just kind of it stays stuck on there pretty hard so we're going to get this in there get it compressed you have one 17 millimeter nut right here to undo obviously once that's all compressed don't try to take that off without having something holding the spring and then we can install our spring spacer with our bolts just like we did on the fronts run the bolts up there tighten them up go get it back in the car all right so on our uh, rearward mount this is the setup we're using to press the studs out like i said before this is a tie rod end separator which actually works perfect for this setup otherwise if you just try to hammer on this we even tried using an air hammer to get it out and, and it's just those babies are in there pretty good but using this little setup really works well um, if not you might be able to get this down so like a socket or something underneath that to be able to really pound on this to get it out but these things are in there pretty tight so if you're just trying to hammer down on it you're probably going to distort and bend the actual mount which you don't want to do so you know like they even say in the instructions a socket underneath it or something hollow to be able to pound against to hammer that out but if you use one of these life is beautiful all right we have our last rear strut assembly reassembled with the new lift spacer on it and i said when you're doing it you do have to totally remove the spring take off the strut mount that way you can actually take off this whole rubber isolator right here it says it's very stuck to it we're able to get a pick in there work your way around it and pry it off of there just because of how hard it sits against the original studs and you can see how much it goes in with the new bolt setup in there there's just no way to really get that out without separating the whole thing. So we have that in, got these all torqued down. And for what it's worth, on the other side and on this side, once I got this actually bolted on to the uh, mount before putting on the strut, I tried putting it in the vehicle. And something from when you tighten this down, it actually spreads these bolts out a little bit. I don't know if it's because of the way the spacer is or the way the mount is. But anyways, once you do that, and it's just enough where you actually can't get it to go to line up properly back into the car. So we actually put this in a vise to squeeze these two back together to get us the correct alignment. So you may have to do that with yours, might not, but just something we ran across on ours that might uh, save you a little bit of grief when you go to put this back up in there and it seems like it doesn't fit. All right, so showing what it takes to actually get this whole rear setup back up inside the car. You see, I have this jack up here and I had this pushing just directly on the bottom of the strut assembly. I had it already inside the car with the two 14 millimeter nuts up top, not totally tightened, but on there pretty well and got this pushing against it to be able to collapse this because otherwise this is sitting down to about here which is nowhere near lining up with the uh, bolt hole in the knuckle. So you have to compress this quite a bit. This car is sitting on the lift and it almost starts pushing it off the lift there with how much you have to push up on this spring to get that to come up. And I also had an assistant prying downwards on the knuckle between the knuckle and the uh, lower portion of the strut assembly head up there, the spring hat is, to be able to push that down to angle a little bit better be able to get this bolt in so it's not impossible but it takes time and it takes a lot of compression so you really got to be careful really easy to hurt yourself getting a bad spot on that getting it pushed up especially if you have your car on jack stands and you're trying to jack this up hard enough to do it you could end up pushing it off the stands so really just be careful make sure you got someone helping you trying to do the back section by yourself it is doable but it would take a lot of time and i just i really recommend having someone there to help you out because it'll make it a whole lot easier all right so that is it for the inside install on our Subaru Outback doing the one inch primitive lift on it. Overall extremely happy with how it all turned out. It's one of those ones you really got to see it in person to really be able to appreciate it. But it is quite a noticeable difference. Did have to uh, adjust the tow on the rear tires. It was out quite a bit. Um, once you get the vehicle back down on the ground with the suspension uh, loaded it does come back a lot but it would still definitely need some adjustment. Um, 
So either way, really get that to an alignment shop quick. Doing the lift on this is actually fairly simple. The hardest part, like I said before, is just doing stuff on the back end, getting that strut assembly back up in there. That's the hardest part. Other than that, it's really not bad. If you're doing this yourself, if you're mechanically inclined at all, figure out taking you maybe four or five hours if you're just taking it easy on it. Um, just always double check everything you're doing. You're working with a lot of important parts, everything with your suspension and steering system, especially on that, um, could cause you a lot of grief. So always go through, double check anything that you are working on, even double checking stuff just in the area. And uh, right now is an excellent time to check out all the bushings and everything else on your car. Like this one, we replaced the lower control arms in the front, new brakes and a couple other things on that, you know, just things that is needed with the age. And if you're gonna be doing this, lifting it, getting it aligned, it's better to take care of that stuff now than to wait later. So anyways, um, I hope this helps. And uh, if nothing else, it'll help you see what you're gonna be doing if you're looking at doing a lift or leveling kit on your Subaru, or at least you know what it takes if someone else is doing it for you. So have any questions or comments, please put them in there for us. We'll try to get back to you as quick as we can on it. I've been a little slow on those. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it.